Leitz and uh, Mr. Kisselbach and his group solved one of the biggest problems in OPT utilization. Mr. Kisselbach, you have the floor. Thank you, please. Yeah, thank you, Professor Rudolf, for this introduction. And I like to share my screen. So, if everybody can everybody see my screen? No. Not yet, not yet. Not yet. Yeah, now it's come. Um, make it uh, full. Full size, please. Perfect, perfect. Is it now the full screen? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so. Uh, Welcome to every participant, and uh, uh, I like to speak about our research work uh, within this project, Net. My my title is from sawn timber to engineer wood products made from oil palm wood, and uh, Professor Frewald has already introduced myself and also my company, so I and skip this uh, slide here and uh, before I come to our research work I like to mention something about the approach we did in our project and this approach is quite different from what we have seen in the past when uh, people uh, investigate the machine of all time wood. So our approach was first to define uh, products with a uh, high added value and with a market potential which uh, can be made out of palm wood and taking into account the special physical properties of this material. So we defined the uh, block boards, lightweight panels, store panels, multi-layer panels, CLP and glue lamp elements. And then we looked on the processing steps which are necessary to make these products happen. And within this uh, processing chain, our competence as a tool manufacturer is uh, saw milling, sawing, planing, and uh, afterwards when the, the products are finished, uh, further processing, like drilling, extending, milling, sawing as well. So in this, uh, this with this respect, we did our research work and uh, created solutions for all these processing steps. Uh, so, what is or what was the challenge for machining this material? This uh, challenge is given in the structure of the material, and we we call this structure like uh, wires in a sponge. That means uh, we have the hard vascular bundles embedded in a very soft parenchyma. And uh, Dr. Neuringer also said this is a, a natural fiber reinforced material. So, this is one uh, aspect to cut these hard fibers which are uh, embedded in a very soft matrix. And the other challenge is the silica content. Of this material, it is uh, hard abrasive silica particles inside, which create uh, high wear on the cutting edge. So, and then we can uh, show something which always happened when machining this oil palm wood and uh, when the cutting edge gets dull. So here on the, on the left side of this picture, you see the surface uh, machine with a sharp tool. And on the right side, this is the surface machine with a blunt tool. And in this case, uh, we have used cutting edge material, which is not suitable for machining this uh, palm wood. This was high speed steel. And this result appears after some meters of cutting length. So 
the challenge was to find a material which lasts much longer than the high speed steel. And therefore, our first step was to take the existing cutting edge materials and run tests in the Palmwood material. And here we have a diagram on the vertical axis. There's the tool wear measured as the offset of the cutting edge compared to the new dark edge. And on the horizontal axis, we have the, the feet length, linear meters of cut. And the different graphs show different cutting edge materials. The green ones are high speed steel. And you see the wear increases rapidly after some meters uh, the cutting edge is, is gone. And then the red and yellow graphs are graphs from uh, tungsten carbide, and also the blue one in the bottom side. And here you can see the range of tungsten carbide is very wide, depending on the structure of the tungsten carbide or the grain size of the binder content. You have a wide range of properties, and uh, we also have tested coating of these cutting edges. And uh, the result was uh, coating is not really an option because the abrasive particles uh, wear this coating very quickly off. And then the best uh, situation is you have a fine grain structure with a low cobalt content, and then you can achieve a very long lasting sharp cutting edge. This is the blue graph here. And also, we, we tested polycrystal and diamond as a cutting edge material. And the behavior is similar. You also get a, a long lasting sharp edge. And you can imagine that this diagram continues to the right side over a long time. And uh, so the our, our preference is uh, for the primary cutting processes. Is uh, tungsten carbide the better option because the uh, cutting conditions are rougher? And for machining finished products, so that uh, means the uh, uh, multi layer panels or the block boards, here also we can use polycrystal diamond. And if you look on the the wear of the cutting edge and compare tungsten carbide to polycrystal and diamond here, we see uh, the wear on tungsten carbide is smoother and it uh, results in a rounding of the cutting edge. And here in polycrystal and diamond, you have a more micro fracture, which uh, appears randomly. And therefore, the, the risk of a damage of this cutting edge is bigger than here with the tension cover. Therefore, we say uh, well, for the primary cutting processes, the tension cover is uh, a better option. So now, then, after we have found out the right uh, cutting edge material, then we investigated all the processing or the machining steps which are necessary within the uh, Processing chain to produce the final products like uh, planing and jointing, sawing along and across the grain, finger jointing, hauling, head bending, routing, and drilling. So, and here I focus on two typical products which uh, are in, in the uh, specific focus of our research work. One is the block board and one is the multi layer panel. <laughs> In both products, we have a core layer and a face layer. Here, the block board face layer is a different material from palm wood. Uh, maybe it's uh, linear or thin MDF or HPL or plywood. Thin plywood is possible. And the core layer is made of uh, palm wood. Uh, favorite structure should be that we use uh, low density material as a core material to create a lighter panel. And here in these uh, multi layer panels, we have also 
on the face layers uh, plywood material, mainly the medium density or high density material to have uh, the, the high strength for a high uh, A modulus. So, and uh, as uh, production processes, we need planing and sawing. And for the, the site of these uh, uh, slats here, we also need jointing, which is a uh, peripheral moving type of planing. So then, we defined the uh, processing steps uh, which are necessary to produce these semi finished products. And then, in the case of blockboard and in the core material, we need the uh, multi rig saw and before the uh, milling operations. And also for, for the multi layer panels, we need the sawing process. But in this case, it's a horizontal splitting to create the thin lamella of the cardboard. And before we also need planning and uh, moving operations. So uh, to find out the right uh, geometry of the cutting edges and the right tooling system, we tested several existing tools to find out which uh, is best for the surface quality. And what we want to achieve is a very smooth surface like you see here which is uh, ready for gluing after machining uh, no sanding should be required because sanding is always uh, an intensive process and our goal is to create a clean surface right after cutting and uh, important factors is the tool geometry and the cutting edge material so then you can see the results. We are able to cut the fibers very clean. Here you see a, a cross section of the material and the surface was uh, plain with our cutters. And you see the vascular bundles are cut through and there's no tear out, no ripping of these fibers. Even if we machine the, the soft material, the low density material, with, with, uh, high content of uh, Tarantana and a low amount of vascular bundles, it's able, we are able to cut the, the vascular bundles very clean and you will see on the top of the surface. So then i like to show a video how these uh, processes work. The video was done on a foresight motor and uh, most of the spots here are in, in a slow motion mode to have more time to look on the tool, what happens here. And especially we were looking on the, the dust collection and the, the dust beam. How we can control this by designing the, the chip colors in the tools. And uh, here I start the video. So here it's uh, planing from the bottom side, which is jointing from the right side. And you see all the dust is going into the exhausting hood and can be exhausted by the system. And here at the end, we also install the saw blade to cut the, the strip. Here in this case, it's the, the side in order to define the width of the, the panels. It's, uh, works uh, very in a, in a very proper way and what we also found out is uh, it's important to have a look on the feeding system so here in this machine normally you have uh, feed rollers with a serrated uh, uh, surface or like uh, toothed wheels and these uh, wheels uh, create uh, strong impacts in the surface and destroy the, the structure Therefore, it's much better to use uh, feed rollers covered with rubber, especially if you machine uh, uh, material with a lower density. So then we had a look on the sawing process to cut the, the strips for the blockboard core layer. And also here, the dust beam is important 
We have a directed, narrow dustbin, which is easy to be collected by the dustbins. And uh, also here, we investigated several key traits of saw blades uh, to find out which is best for the material oil palm wood. And at least the, the traits in the middle uh, are uh, remain here uh, the alternate top bevel and left piece, which is uh, mainly used for best cutting quality. So now we can look on this video. You see the, the saw dust goes in one direction, and if you have the dust over here in front of the saw, you can collect all the particles in a proper way. And you see here, we create a waste strip with a salt plate, and this is not good for automatic production process. So for the, the edge machining, it's better to use a hover to create just chips and no waste strips here. And for the, the middle cuts, salt plate is uh, of course, the, the right solution. So then uh, we also work together with machine manufacturers to, to uh, make these processes happen in an in a industrial way. And here we have found out a very good feeding system, especially for the low density material for producing the, the core layers. This is a chain, deep chain with spikes, and the spikes have a very strong grip in the material, and they don't destroy the, the natural structure of the palm wood. They just create some impacts, but those impacts uh, doesn't matter because it's a core layer and you have uh, covered it with the face legs. So here, this is uh, some um, pictures from the machine. And Process looks like. So then to produce the, the face layers for three layer or multi layer panels, we need a splitting source which work uh, in a horizontal way and cut very wide slats out of the PCB uh, and, or, or the, the palm wood uh, lumber. And uh, here it's important to have uh, a very tight guidance of the material to avoid vibrations. And then afterwards, after the cut, you need something to guide the, the already cut lamellae to avoid uh, that they uh, uh, vibrate afterwards. And this can be done by riding knives or by brushes. So here, this is an example of how the, the writing knife works. And so it's also possible to apply with some brushes to hold the lamella in place. So then we went to a customer with, uh, who is producing plastic floor, and he uh, allowed us to use his machine for a, a mass production of these lamella. And here we can show you some images of this production process. We put the, the plane timber through the machine and then the splitting saw works here behind these dust hoods. So here you see the image how the saw plates are arranged where the lamellae are already cut. And then uh, slats come out of the machine, ready for gluing. So um, with this material, we went to a press manufacturer to make the, the gluing and the pressing and the production of the semi-finished panels. So this was not our competence. So I have no 
slides about this issue, but after producing these materials, we have also take care that uh, the users of these panels are able to do their machine operations on this material. And this can be a drilling holes for hinges or dowel holes or creating groups of cutouts here and also uh, hogging the sides and make a contour with a lot of cutouts. All these uh, processes we have investigated in addition to the real to, to the pure production process. And here you can see uh, Andrea, sorry to disturb yes. you. Uh, you have to uh, because we are already getting late, so please try to conclude that. Yes, uh, yes, I'm I'm ready in, in a few seconds. So here you can see the, the process of double hogging, which is necessary to make uh, rectangular formats out of this material. So this works uh, in a proper way. You create very clean edges and corners. Then we look for sawing on table saws. It's uh, also no problem when using the, the right uh, saw blade geometry. And uh, also cutting to the CNC machines, especially when you cut against the fibers here with the radius cut. And the next example is with this rectangular cut. And you see there is no splintering and no ripping of the material. Uh, everything is possible. Also, edge bending is no problem. And uh, if you have the light density material as a core material, then you have a lightweight panel, which uh, is uh, in, in uh, competition to honeycomb materials. But here, you don't have the hollow space inside. And edge bending is much more easy uh, compared to the honeycomb materials. So then, we can say we, uh, we uh, handle dowel holes, we can handle heat holes, pockets, cutouts, lock cases as well, no problem. And uh, therefore, uh, we can say the material oil palm wood is a sustainable raw material available in large quantities, suitable as suitable physical properties, and therefore there's a I a huge potential for engineered solid wood products like these door panels and the material is machinable with our tools for all required cutting processes and we have proven industrial manufacturing processes and the, the group of Palmwood Net uh, says we are mastering OP wood. So this is uh, the end of my presentation, and uh, if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask me now. Thank you, Mr. Kisselbach. Thank you for showing us very impressive achievements, but not only in tool development. You also showed us that the whole system, processing system, including the machine, is important to get very good results. And the results you showed us are very impressive. And one question, my question to Mr. Möhringer earlier today is already answered now. It is not enough to get the new tools and put it on an old machine and think now we are ready to process oil palm wood. So it is the whole system which is necessary, including the tools. Thank you very much for this insight. This is very important. Are there any questions? I'm already thinking that we shouldn't allow questions now, Dr. Javaid, because no we are question. Late. We have no questions. If somebody have that, we can take one question. There is no issue, but okay. we are running out of time. So I think if, if, there is if one, anybody one, wants to discuss, they can discuss later on, you know. Mm. Yeah, I, I think so, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Now we come to the last presentation but still and very important before the before the break. In Europe is lunch break, but this is a very